What's going on everybody and welcome back to Comic Breakdown. In this video we are jumping into the Invincible Iron Man issue number 9. Now lately when it comes to Marvel Comics we have been seeing them connect in ways that hasn't happened that often. But with the Mutant Massacre, with the Fall of X, we are seeing the Avengers and everybody in between come to the aid of mutant kind. And none more than Iron Man himself. Though Iron Man has seen dire days, essentially having no money, no armor, we had last left off with him facing off against Fei Long Stark Sentinels, doing this in an effort to save Emma Frost's life. Now Tony stands before Fei Long, and he awaits his execution. So make sure you guys have subscribed to the channel, make sure that you like this video, and with that being said, let's dive into this breakdown. Alright guys, we are picking up with Tony Stark, sitting on this street in New York City with the rain and lightning coming down, the Stark Sentinels standing overhead, and Tony Stark waits for Fei Long's reaction. He waits to see what Fei Long might do. Really, what Tony is doing is calling his bluff. He lets Fei Long know that you could end me right here, right now. That all of this could stop. The only problem is that he would kill an Avenger in the streets. This would only be bad for business for Fei Long. And so he calls off the Stark Sentinels, doing so just as Captain America arrives. But when Cap goes up to Tony, Tony tells him to go away, cause right now he doesn't want to be seen with his friends. He wants Fei Long to believe that he had won, that he is beaten, that this is all over. And Tony goes on to also let him know that he has a new suit, one that will help him continue to be an Avenger. But he's gonna go dark for a while. The less Cap and everybody knows, the better. This is what takes him down underground. He goes to the lowest point in all of Manhattan. About an hour through the tunnels, this is where he runs into his Iron Man suit. Telling it to open up, this is where we have Emma Frost popping out. And at first, Emma Frost is outraged. She is livid. Not happy that she got stuck in that tin can. This attitude quickly changes when she sees the state of Tony. Cause right now, he is at the bottom of the barrel. He barely escaped with his life having a stay of execution cause Fei Long is smarter than executing an Avenger in the middle of the streets. But that doesn't mean that Fei Long doesn't have other avenues that he's gonna go down. Any attempt to take Tony off the board, Fei Long will do. He's just gonna do it with a little more stealth, a little less obvious. But after a little conversation, Tony hands a phone over to Emma Frost, showing her the Mutant Massacre headlines, and then what Orcus is saying about mutant medicine, with Emma in absolute disbelief. She sees this as the perfect frame job, and more than that, Emma cannot sense her girls. She doesn't even know if they are alive. While this heavy grief overcomes them, Emma says that they cannot do despair right now, that they have to get the high ground as quickly as possible. Now, Tony goes ahead and he suits up. He lets Emma know that you should probably stay down here for a while. Interpol warrants everything the whole nine yards. Underground is probably the safest place for her to be. And as Tony goes to walk out, Emma does have one question to ask. She asked Tony, what if they are all dead? And just like Captain America had said, Tony tells her to avenge them. We are seeing very much that the Avengers are on the side of mutant kind. Though that was never really in question, the Avengers are showing up with a vengeance. Many of them even excusing going too far, doing too much. Because at this point, mutant kind, their kill no human rule is off the board. And it appears that the Avengers and everybody else don't really have a problem with this. After what just happened, it's almost as if they're excusing it because of it. Or at the very least, they're looking the other way. But this is what takes us over to Jersey City. Tony had sold his cab stand at a significant loss. He has been trying to get Rhodes out of jail, but not having the money or the funds to really supply any kind of legal assistance. He is selling off anything and everything he has to make sure he stays safe. The only problem, Fei Long is making it difficult. Fei Long is having guys beat him up in jail, and at this rate, he's really not going to survive much longer. And the advice that She-Hulk is giving him, the same advice that she has been giving, to give Fei Long back his armor and get a new lawyer because she has to dump Tony as one of her clients if she is going to continue to help Rhodes. This is what takes us to Stark Unlimited HQ, 
Fei Long down on the main floor taking pictures with some locals. That's when the Iron Man suit comes crashing through the window. He tells Fei Long to call off all of the attacks. If he does not, he will suffer the consequences. But Fei Long finally has what he wants. He has the suit. As Iron Man leaves, we see him walking by a liquor store. For a brief moment, it looks like he might consider going inside and getting himself a handle. But he stops himself. He doesn't fall off the wagon. He is going to keep fighting. He's going to keep pushing on. And so after visiting a wig shop, he goes back to Emma Frost. He tells her that the Sentinels are hunting, rumors of deportation to Arako. He doesn't really know what to do from here, but as he has a conversation with Emma Frost, things get a little bit heated. Both of them have endured heavy losses. Both of them are grieving greatly. And so when the temperaments get high, we see the argument break out. But during this argument, that is where Tony begins to have a panic attack. Add in the fact that he is still concussed from last night. His best friend is in jail. Fei Long is going to have him killed just for knowing Tony Stark, just to destroy Tony. And we see a moment of weakness in Tony unlike any other, calling out pleading for any kind of help. This is when Emma takes him into a little bit of a memory. Back in California, she took him to a simple and happier place. These days in the hangar, they were the best of his life. But this helps him get a little bit grounded. He knows that he needs new armor. He's thinking that maybe he needs two. And though that may sound expensive, this is war. He tells Emma that he's not only willing to die for this, he's willing to earn that Interpol warrant. He just wants to do it in the smartest way possible, because he has a lot of engineering to do to overcome the Sentinels. This will require a lot, a lot of technology, and it's going to take time, but time is something that they don't have on their side. Nonetheless, the two of them strike an agreement. Their alliance will stand until the death of their enemies. As their conversation comes to an end, we see Tony pull out the wig, let her know that she can continue on as Hazel Kindle, also giving her a ring that has the side blocker. This will allow her to go out into public, to be untraceable, an opportunity to move in silence. As she gets changed, they head off to the Hellfire Gala. Right now, Emma Frost is a refugee. When all of this was going down, she knew that she had to do something with her money. Fearing that it might be seized, she transferred it to a third party. And so as they go inside, they are let known that the White King is in his study preparing for the meeting with his new attorneys. And when Tony sees who the new White King is, he is in absolute disbelief. Because the new White King is Kingpin, aka Wilson Fisk. And that will be the end of this issue. So let me know what you guys think down in the comments. It's looking like the next issue is going to be the marriage between Tony Stark and Emma Frost. Now this could very likely just be a, a marriage of convenience. Because of their alliance, because of everything that they have going on, this marriage seems more like a political move. An opportunity for Tony Stark to still have some footing, but also protect Emma Frost. And with Wilson Fisk having all the money in control of the Hellfire Gala, this gives them some kind of financial foothold. An opportunity to fight back. An opportunity for Iron Man to continue his work. Work. But this issue really was an emotional roller coaster for Tony, almost considering going back to alcohol. His best friend in prison nearly beaten to death every single day. No money, no assets, giving up his Iron Man suit. He really is at one of his lowest points ever. But as the saying goes, if you back a wounded dog into a corner, it is going to bite. And Tony is showing his fangs. It will only be a matter of time before Fei Long feels them. So let me know your thoughts, let me know your theories. If you would like to get completely caught up on everything going on with this series, go ahead, check out the link in my description, as well as the top of this video. It will get you completely caught up on everything going on with Iron Man. 
If you would like to support the channel, you can always do so by joining the channel membership. Much like Patreon, having multiple different tiers, from $1 to $50. From loyalty badges to comics every single month. Not only are you helping out the channel tremendously, but you are getting tons of perks in the process. Now, if you're unable to do this, do me a favor, subscribe to the channel, like this video, hit that notification bell, and with that being said, until the next breakdown.